So I, I just wrote, wrote down the last exact sequence that I wrote this morning. So this is for a torus. And this is the one for an abelian variety that I didn't try this morning. So it's very similar. It's, this one is a bit longer. There's one more term. Um, but essentially, uh, the idea is, is exactly the same. It relates local information to global information about Galois cohomology of this object. And this one, to get this one, you have to assume that sha1 of k a and sha1 of k a dual are finite. Uh, finite. Okay? So this is the poitou tate exact sequence that we get this morning. <coughs> and we need to interpret them in terms of uh, local global principles on Brahmanian obstructions for torsors. Um, so recall that we had a, a way to compute the Brouwer group in terms of Galois cohomology of the Picard, uh, the, the geometrical Picard group. So since uh, uh, a torus as a, as a trivial geometric Picard group, and in fact, uh, well, of course, this will be true also for any torsor and the T, because uh, over K bar, a torsor is isomorphic to T. You get that uh, for any K torsor, say X under T, you get that, uh, <coughs> so it was a formula that I gave in the first lecture, if I'm correct. Uh, you can compute the algebraic Brouwer group of X using the H2 of K with values in the invertible functions on, uh, well, X bar, which is the same as invertible function on T bar. So you get something like this, K bar of, so, it's something like this. Using the Rothschild cell spectral sequence, we proved that we had an isomorphism like this. <coughs> and what is this uh, Galois module here? So we can prove that this is the same. So it is, clearly, this is the same uh, abelian group as this one. And in fact, it is an isomorphism of Galois modules. And this one, it it is classical that an invertible function on a torus up to a constant, it is given by a character. So a morphism, a group of morphism from T to GM. So this is exactly, so you have a, a natural map. So if you, if you consider characters of T, morphism from T to GM, uh, you can consider them as functions. And in fact, this is an isomorphism of Galois modules. So, in the end, you get that the algebraic Brouwer group of X is the same as H2 of K T hat. And if you look at the blackboard here, this is the algebraic Brouwer group of any uh, torsor X under T hat. Okay, so this is the algebraic Brouwer group of X dual. And this is something like adelic points on T. So you get a map from adelic points on T to the dual of the Brouwer group. It makes sense to compare this map with the map given by the Brouwer Manning obstruction. Okay? And it will be, of course, the same map. <coughs> Probably maybe up to sign, but I think it's the same map. Um, so, you, you, you see a first idea of why this is related with the Brahmanian obstruction. In the 
abelian, on the abelian, abelian variety side, since uh, <coughs> an abelian variety has no uh, non-constant invertible functions, you can use uh, also the Orchilser spectral sequence for k torsors under A. And you get that, well, the H1 this time of k peak x bar. So x bar is something is well, either I write, I write x bar or x k bar, okay? So this is isomorphic to uh, the algebraic Brouwer group of x <coughs> by the Orschildser spectral sequence. And you can map, uh, well, in the Picard group of x bar, you have the peak zero part corresponding to the dual abelian variety. So you have a natural map from this H1 of k, uh, a hat, uh, a star, sorry. So the dual abelian variety maps to the Picard group of, ah, sorry. Because this is the same as a Galois module as the Picard group of uh, a k bar. And then you have a map from this one to this one. So you get such a map. And one more time, this one here, Appears uh, there. No, it's not the same. No, no, no. So it's also a peak zero. So you should replace before. Okay, 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 okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I should put peak zero here. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Peak zero x k bar. And now you say that this one is the same as peak zero of a k bar. So you can map H1 K A star to this one. Thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah. You don't need the completion. Where? Here because it's compact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this, uh, yes, no? this, this, ah, okay, okay, okay. For the global thing, you need. Okay, I, I can put it here, but it's, it's, it's the same as this one. Yeah, it's a product of compact, so yeah, okay. Uh, and so here you recover, not, well, not exactly the whole broader group of X, but at least some part. So this is related to, uh, to, the, to the dual of the broader group of X, okay? So one more time, this map here is related to the Brouwer-Manin map. So let's put everything, well, let, let's, let's write the, sorry. Let's write the, the result precisely. <coughs> so given uh, a k torsor x under t, respectively a, So for the Rasser principles, you, you for the Rasser principle, you assume assume uh, that you have a, a delic point. What does it mean in terms of Galois cohomology? It means that the class of the torsor X, which is in H1 KT or H1 KA, is in fact in SHA1 because it is. Locally trivial, it has points locally everywhere. Okay? So this class here is in SHA1 of KT or SHA1 of KA. And <coughs> so the exactness of this sequence here and here, exactly mean that well, is a reformulation of the duality between sha one of t and sha one of t hat, okay? And the duality here between sha one of a and sha one of a dual. So, given such an such an x in sha one, <coughs> uh, 
Uh, so for any given for any given local point in X, we have a formula, uh, and any alpha uh, in sha uh, two of k t hat, respectively. Alpha is taken in sha one of k a dual. So given an adelic point on an element in the in the sha of the dual, well, we have a pairing which which you can see here and here. Okay, this map identifies well, the exactness identifies the co-kernel of this one, which is the dual of the sha one of a dual, and the kernel of this one, which is sha one of a. So you have a pairing between sha one of t and sha two of, of t dual, which I will denote by a coproduct, because it comes from by, it, it comes from the coproduct in etal cohomology. If you remember the art inverse, the duality, and so on. So you can write in in the one on the one side, you can write the coproduct like this, which is the duality, global duality. Uh, between sha, sha of the group and sha of the dual. And you can write on the other side the Brauermannian pairing between the point x and, uh, well, essentially alpha, but map to the Brauer group using these two maps there. So I have to, to give a name to these maps. Say, uh, I don't know, phi. So the map here and the map, uh, say, here, phi. And what we get, so phi of alpha is an element in the Brouwer group. You can take the Brouwermannian pairing between this point and this element in the Brouwer group. And the point is that those two pairings coincide as elements of Q mod Z. And as a consequence, since the global duality pairing here is an exact pairing, uh, you get the following conclusion. So if X is orthogonal to the broad group, <coughs> and in fact, well, you only need the algebraic Brouwer group and even a smaller group of the algebraic Brouwer group, the one given by these small subgroups of the Brouwer group. So if X is orthogonal to the Brouwer group, then, well, you get that this is always zero for any alpha, because this is orthogonal to the Brouwer group. Hence, this is always zero. So you get that X for any alpha in the Tate Safarovich group of KT hat or K A star. This implies, because this pairing is a perfect duality, that alpha is zero in the sha one of T or sha one of A, which exactly means, no, 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 uh, not alpha, sorry, X, X is zero. And the class of a torsor is trivial if and only if the torsor has a rational point. So we proved that given an adelic, po uh, an adelic point satisfying the Brownian obstruction, the torsor has a rational point. So we proved that the Brownian obstruction to the Hasse principle is the only one. Uh, I think uh, in the paper by uh, Arari and Samueli, they, they proved that the sign was plus, but, uh, um, well. Oh, yeah, maybe in your book there is a sign, well, maybe it depends on the convention you, okay, okay. Okay, this is up to sign. But of course, since we are only interested here 
in the vanishing of this number well defined up to sign. Uh, how, how does it uh, this, is, this is not easy because this is a global, uh, this is global pairings. Uh, in, in your book, it's not very, uh, it's, it's a complicated proof. And in the paper by uh, Harari and Samueli, so this formula here, so this is in a paper by Harari and Samueli, and also in the book by uh, Alexei Skorobogatov. Um, the proof in the book by Harari, uh, in the paper by Harari and Samueli, uh, is maybe easier because it's, 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 it's a proof that comes from a comparison in et al cohomology. And you don't have this co-cycles computation that, that you had in the Galois cohomology proof. So even if, if, if it's a, a pairing between Galois cohomology groups, SHA1 and SHA2, or SHA1 and SHA1, uh, to define them in, in, in terms of Galois cohomology is complicated. You have to lift some co-cycles, and uh, it's really a complicated computation. Uh, if you define this pairing as a limit of et al cohomology pairing, then it really comes from just a classical cup product in et al cohomology. And then the, the comparison is easier with this uh, et al point of view. Okay? By the way, for Parabellian varieties, it is claimed in the first yeah. paper by Lanin that there is no problem. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> so, uh, yeah. And in the projective setting, the, the P is the composition of two arrows? Yes. So it is trivial? No, no, no. Yes, wait, but the, yeah, we have two arrows, but it's not a... We have a map from H1 of K A star to H1 and K A star. Yeah? Is like a yeah? Uh, yeah, but the composition is non-zero. The, the, the vertical map is an isomorphism. A, a, a dual is a peak zero. Ah, okay, okay. So the vertical, this is not a, yeah, yeah, this is not a complex. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> so, um, so we proved the Brahman obstruction to the Hassel principle is the only one. We can do the same for, uh, uh, so with a little more work, uh, the first, I uh, know, well, the first line for tori and the second line for abelian varieties, since it, rela it's, it relates, say, uh, adelic points to rational points on the variety, with a little more work, you can really interpret this, where well, you can replace the profinite completion here by a, a closure. And it, give, it gives really uh, the, the fact that the Brahmanian obstruction to weak approximation or strong approximation is the only one. So uh, the first or se second line in Poitou Tate exact sequence <coughs> gives. So this requires some extra work. Uh, the equality uh, say uh, T K uh, bar uh, the, the closure of rational points into well ah. You have to modify the adelic points at the inf infinite places. So I, re I really wrote it. Uh, I really write it as uh, Galois cohomology, cohomology group because uh, for the infinite places you have to take the modified cohomology groups. Otherwise, uh, T of K is discrete in this uh, huge product, so the, the closure cannot be uh, th that big. And uh, but at all finite places, this is a, the set of rational points, and you get this uh, equality, which is, which is really a, a result about strong approximation, and you can, uh, by similar arguments, prove weak approximation also. So putting here the direct product, the, the same result works for, uh, and here's the unramified broad group, you get also the weak approximation result. And in the case of abelian variety, you get the same, that is, the closure here is exactly <coughs> the product, oh, no, no prime, 
since it's proper. This is a direct product. So this is weak or strong approximation for A. So to summarize, uh, we can state, state it as a theorem. Uh, so, which is due to, uh, let's let put many names, uh, Manin, Manin and Wang for the Abelian variety case. Well, even though some, some compatibilities were not uh, checked. And then, uh, uh, in the case of Tori, we can say Voskresensky, Sansuk, and uh, well, the, the more general result is uh, can, a more general result can be proved putting together abelian varieties and tori into so-called semi-abelian varieties, and this was done by Arari and Samueli. Well, yes. Well. Uh, yeah, but then, then, then you did, well, you did the strong approximation for Tori and, okay. And your son, yes, 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 yes. If I want to add strong approximation, I put your son also. Okay, so many people, and what did do, what do they prove? So uh, the Burman in obstruction to the Hassel principle, weak approximation, and even strong approximation for Torsos under, uh, so you can put here either Tori abelian varieties, semi abelian varieties, and the last one contains the two previous, the two, the two first ones, but I don't want to define precisely what a semi abelian variety is. Well, essentially, it, the, the result holds for any uh, uh, commutative connected uh, algebra group, okay, uh, under Tori uh, over uh, a number field. Okay. Okay, and the proof is essentially to prove the what we take exact sequence, and then the comparison between the pairing in this exact sequence and the pairing in the Brownian in obstruction. Okay. So we proved the. Essentially, the abelian case, the commutative case for the, in the theorem by Borovoy, well, that I mentioned before, which says that for uh, torsors and even nice homogeneous spaces of algebraic groups, so Brahman abstraction are the only one. So now we have to, oh yeah. So, so for instance, you 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 know the example I gave at the end of the first lecture with the norm equation. So of course it's a torsor and a tori. <laughs> So it's the fact that the Bermanian obstruction uh, explains the failure of the Hassel principle is a, a little, a, a very particular case of this uh, result. Um, you get also curves of, of, of genus one. Uh, oh yeah, oh, okay, for this theorem to be true, you have to assume the finiteness of, of Sha, okay? In the case of, when you have an abelian part, you have to assume the finiteness of Sha. Okay. So for instance, uh, curves of, of, of genus one, if you assume the finiteness of Sha, they uh, satisfy uh, the principle and weak approximation with Brahman and obstruction. Okay. Um, okay, but all of this is, this is very nice, but this is still abelian groups, okay? And we can be interested, interested in non-abelian groups. So, uh, And yes, and last, last remark about these exact sequences. Um, we can also give uh, nice uh, consequences of the exactness of the, the end of the exact sequence. The, the, last, well, the last two lines yeah. also have some uh, geometrical interpretations in terms of Brahmanian obstructions, but not for principal homogeneous spaces but for more general homogeneous spaces with toric stabilizers, for instance. So I won't give details here, but you can also interpret the, the last line, for instance, in terms of, uh, of uh, <coughs> non-principal homogeneous spaces. 
Sorry? Have you finished the letter in the same week? The statement? Yeah. Uh, it's the only one. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, R is the only one, or is the only one. Thank you. <laughs> if, if you're assuming finite. Assuming the finite, the finiteness of sharp. And in some sense, you just have to assume the finiteness of Sha for the abelian variety under study. Not, you don't have to assume the finiteness of Sha for all abelian varieties to get for one given uh, the result for one given example. Okay, assuming Sha is finite. Are there many examples for which the Sha is? Not so much, but uh, well, for some. Uh, well, for elliptic curve, we have a, a several. Uh, I think. Well, it depends what you call a lot of examples, but uh, <laughs> for elliptic curve, we have a lot of examples where Sha well, is finite, but, but of course not the, not the general case. So. <clears throat> uh, okay, so now let's, uh, so this was part uh, 2.2, two point, uh, two point two, I think. Maybe now it's 2.3. Uh, now we have to deal with uh, more general algebra groups, which are not necessarily uh, commutative. Uh, so torsors, uh, so primary obstruction for torsors under, uh, uh, more general, uh, say, connected algebra groups. And we would like to, uh, so I will explain two ways to prove the same statement, but uh, replacing uh, commutative algebraic groups by, by any uh, algebraic group, essentially. Uh, I will give two, two, uh, two directions to, to prove this result. And the first one I want to explain is uh, really a natural generalization of this method here. So uh, first I have to give uh, some, a few results about the structure of algebra groups over a, <coughs> over a field. So here uh, K, K is a field of, say, of characteristic zero. <coughs> what can, you, can we say about the structure of a, a, a general, uh, say, connected algebra group? So first, uh, a general algebra group is an extension of an abelian variety by a linear algebra group. So uh, this is a Chevalier theorem. So uh, there exists, uh, so there is a uh, canonical exact sequence, a canonical, say, uh, Exact sequence uh, with G here, a normal, uh, a normal subgroup which is uh, affine, say G, G F. This one is affine, normal, and the quotient is uh, an abelian variety. So. You can deduce from this result that uh, G is uh, quasi-projected, the result that we used this morning. Um, so the idea, okay, so if we know the result for abelian varieties, so the theorem for abelian varieties is okay, now we need to take care about the, the affine or linear case, okay? Well, then you have to be careful about the dévisage but, um, but essentially it works. So we have to care about uh, uh, linear connecting the algebra groups. <coughs> yeah, so I, I will very often uh, take quotients of algebra groups by algebraic subgroups. So there is a, well, a general result that says that if you, if you consider uh, 
a linear algebra group and a, an algebraic subgroup, then the quotient is always representable by a quasi-projective algebraic variety. And this can be proved using uh, constructing a nice representation of the linear algebra group, such that the subgroup is a stabilizer of a line, and then you realize you, you quotient variety as a, you quotient sheaf as a variety, a sub-variety of a projective space, and, uh, and it proves a representability. So uh, the second uh, dévisage I want to use on the affine part now, uh, so assume G is fine <coughs> and still connected. Then, uh, well, you have several parts into, in, a, in an algebra group. So you have the unipotent radical, say GU, which is a normal subgroup. So this is a unipotent radical. So uh, the maximal connected normal uh, solvable uh, subgroup in G. Unipotent. Yeah, uni yeah, unipotent, sorry. Uh, and the quotient is a, a group that is called uh, reductive. And reductive means uh, that it has trivial unipotent radical. So if you compute the unipotent radical here, since you mod it out by this, this one, in fact, you can prove that the unipotent radical here is trivial. And Galois cohomology of unipotent groups is uh, tri essentially trivial because it, so such a group is a is a um, uh, is, is a successive successive extensions. It, it has a, f a f um, composition series with a quotient uh, at least of a k bar isomorphic to to GA. Since the cohomology of GA is a uh, trivial. Uh, this has trivial Galois cohomology, so it, 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 we can forget it and concentrate on this, uh, this side here, okay? So we have to concentrate on the reductive group uh, side. And to deal with this, this case, uh, so if G is reductive, uh, well, we can, uh, make another dévisage. So you can take the derived subgroup, which is just, well, which is a, an algebraic subgroup representing the, 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 the functor uh, given by the derived subgroup for all uh, K algebra uh, R, okay? So you, this is an algebraic subgroup, normal, and the quotient is uh, a torus. This one is called, is called semi-simple. And for instance, it is, uh, it is equal to, the, to its own derived subgroup, okay? It has no uh, toric quotient. So one more time, we know the result for, for tori. So essentially, the idea is we have to deal with uh, semi-simple groups. And to deal with semi-simple groups, uh, we want to reduce to the case of simply connected groups. So a semi-simple group is always a quotient, or a finite quotient of a simply connected group. So GSS has a simply connected cover with a finite uh, this is an, uh, an isogeny, so this is a subjective morphism with finite central uh, kernel, okay? So this is finite uh, multiplicative type, in fact, uh, central kernel. So up to a finite group, this uh, semi-simple, uh, this derived subgroup is a, a, a simply connected uh, group. And what does simply connected mean? Uh, <coughs> so here in characteristic zero, uh, it means that the, the, um, the etal fundamental group of a k-bar is, uh, is trivial. In positive characteristics, this is not uh, equivalent. Um, 
and it, it, it can be phrased also in the language of algebra groups. So any isogeny uh, above GSC is an isomorphism, okay? So it can be stated uniquely in terms of algebra groups this way. Um, okay, and well, basically we cannot go any much more further, much, much further. Um, we have to deal with simply connected groups. And then, after dealing with simply connected groups, we have to put everything together to, to come back to the initial uh, connected algebra group, okay? So, uh, I will give the main results for simply connected groups. Okay, um, so it's 2.3, say 2.3.1. Uh, simply connected case. And what is nice with uh, some simple simply connected groups, that is that they are essentially classified by uh, root systems and uh, Dinkin diagrams. So uh, these groups are classified, and uh, well, to study has a principle for torsors, or to study weak approximation or strong approximation, we can use the classification and consider each case, and hope that we can prove in each case the, the re required result. Um, and uh, so for instance, if you consider, uh, <coughs> so let, 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 me, let me state the theorems. So using this classification for most of those results, not all of them, but for, for most of those results. So I have to put some names. Uh, yes, I have to put some names here. It lost in my notes. Uh, okay. Uh, yes. Uh, so Knesser. Uh, Harder. Chernozov. Uh, then, if you want to deal with uh, approximation, so I have to put Platonov also. And, uh, well, probably many of the names, but these are the main ones. So, what does this people proof? prove? Often using classification. So, for instance, Chernozov is a specialist of the groups of type E8, which is often the most complicated case to deal with uh, this kind of problems. Um, so they prove the following. So first, if K is p-adic, so G, here G is semi-simple and simply connected, right? Like this part we get in the end. So if K is p-adic, then H1 is trivial. Um, so maybe I should also put Brua and Tits for this uh, result here, which is, in, with their proof, it is independent of the classification. Uh, so in the periodic case, there is no, so we, it, 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 it exactly means that uh, torsors under G of a periodic field have a rational point, okay? Um, then, concerning the Hasse principle, so if, if K is a number field, 
Then the Hassel principle holds, which we can state as the fact that this map from H1 kg to the product, well, over all places, but in fact, you don't need uh, finite places because at finite places, this is trivial, okay? This map is, uh, well, the Hassel principle says that this map has trivial kernel, okay? And in fact, it's, it's more, this is a bijection. Uh, <coughs> so this is a bijection. So it contains the Hassel principle, okay? Uh, concerning then uh, weak approximation and, uh, <coughs> and strong approximation, so G, so in the number field case, G of K is dense in uh, G of, uh, so this is weak approximation. Um, so this is weak approximation. And if K is a number field, a strong approximation holds under uh, some capacity assumption. So if K is a number field and S0 is a finite set of places such so that uh, uh, the KV points, uh, well, this is not correct as I, I am stating it here. Well, let, let's write a correct theorem. So you take, uh, so let's say just that it satisfies. So the local points at this, but well, the places that you want to remove to have strong approximation, you ask that this space here is not, well, satisfies a non compatible uh, non compactness assumption, which I want to make more precise, non-compactness assumption, then, exactly. So if, if you feel as a complex, if you feel K as a complex place, then you put S0 to be just this complex place and the assumption is satisfied. Essentially, the assumption is that this set is non-compact, but you have to take in, you have to, to make this assumption for any uh, almost simple factor of G. So I, I don't want to, to state this like this. Uh, satisfy a non-compactness assumption, then strong approximation of places in S0 holds for G. Okay. So for semi simple simply connected groups, we have everything we want. And you, there is no need of Brouwer-Mannin obstruction. And this is, well, this is quite reasonable because essentially the Brouwer group is trivial. You can check that the Brouwer group of, of such a group is, uh, is trivial. So this is why there is no Brouwer-Mannin obstruction. But all the local global principles are uh, satisfied. So if, if you want to, well, of course I won't, I won't prove the theorem. It's, it's a very long, long uh, result. Many cases to consider and it involves a lot of uh, different techniques. And for, but if you want an example, if uh, G is some group of, is a spin group of a quadratic form, so this is a, a simply connected covering of the, of the special orth orthogonal group associated to Q, okay? So Q is a quadratic form. Then uh, to prove the, the, the theorem in this case, essentially, uh, well, a, a key ingredient is a classical Hasse-Minkowski uh, theorem, okay? Uh, the proof. 
uh, is based on Hasse Minkowski. But this is just a very spe special case of the, of the result. I won't say more about the proof. <coughs> okay, now we know what happens for semi-abelian varieties and semi-simple simply connected groups, which are essentially the two extreme, uh, two extreme cases. How to put everything together? And this is what I want to explain now. <coughs> so this is 2.3.2. I think, general case. So we will restrict to the, the, the crucial case is the, well, the, the reductive case. So let G of a K be a reductive algebra group. And the idea here, so one idea to prove the, the result following the strategy we, we used to prove the commutative case is to <laughs> construct a poitou tate exact sequence for uh, the Galois cohomology of, of the group G. Okay? Uh, how to get, how do we get a poitou tate exact sequence for such a group. So of course, if we think about what to take their sequence on duality theorems, we want to have a Galois cohomology, uh, abelian Galois cohomology, okay? Yeah. So uh, we will use uh, so-called abelianization of Galois cohomology, which is a nice way to uh, understand uh, H1 of K and G, uh, or a big part of this H1 of K and G, uh, as a commutative Galois cohomology group. Um, so we would construct a map. So I will do it for H0 and H1, uh, for any field, in fact. So, oh, it was little k, capital K, little k. Two maps, in degree zero and in degree one. So starting from the non-abelian Galois cohomology sets that we defined using either torsors or cocycles. And this one here will be uh, abelian cohomology groups, which I will define uh, in a few minutes. And uh, so let's call these maps, say, ab0 and ab1, okay? And the kernel, well, essentially the kernel of this map, whatever that means, because this is, this, is, this is not a group, for instance, but the, there will be a long exact sequence, well, not so long, there will be an exact sequence, and the, the term before here will be the Galois cohomology of the simply connected cover GSC. With, uh, so let's, let's put it here. So with exact sequences, whatever that means, it will be essentially exact sequences of pointed sets or non-abelian groups for the, for the degree zero part of the following uh, shape. Okay, so we would like to construct such a, such a thing. And since we know everything about this simply connected part by the theorem above, uh, and we know, 
well, we hope that you could know everything here using uh, what we take exact sequences as, uh, as before, because this, is a, this, this will be essentially constructed using tori, tori, okay? So this will be understood by Poitutate, classical Poitutate exact sequences. Then, using this exact sequence, we can hope to understand this uh, by dévisage. And of course, if, if the group, for, so for instance, if you look at this exact sequence here, if this group is simply connected, then you have this, the natural candidate to define the map here. This is just the map. This will be H1 of KT with this notation. And it, you write the long exact sequence associated to this short exact sequence, and you will get this here. But the problem is that in general, the, the derived subgroup of a reductive group is not simply connected. So you have this second step here. And this is not so, well, you have to put the, these two steps together, okay? So let's put everything together. And for this, you consider for the morphism, you have this natural morphism, okay? The composition of GSC to GSS, then to G. You call it rho. And you can take maximal tori, say TSC to T. So any, say, reductive group admits uh, maximal tori that are defined over the base field. So these are maximal tori in both groups, and you can choose them to be compatible in this sense, okay? And what is uh, interesting is that um, so you have G here. Here you can put GSC to G, the map row. So of course, we have, we have a natural map here, which is the equality. And here you have the inclusions, TSC to T. And well, if you put some, you can put some one here to complete a kind of rectangle. You can put some brackets to make it nicer. And I want to consider each line as an object, a complex of Algebra group, algebra groups, okay? So each line is a complex of algebra groups. This one is a complex of tori, so it, it really lives in a nice ab abelian category and so on. Now these ones are more uh, complicated. But the point is that, uh, so you consider those as complexes of algebra groups. And The point is that this map of complexes from here to here is a quasi-isomorphism. So this map here. What is the yeah, yeah, I will, I will explain, yeah. It just means, so if this one is rho prime, it just means that the kernel of rho prime is isomorphic. Well, you have a natural map between the kernels and the co-kernels. And the kernels are isomorphic and the co-kernels are isomorphic. And this is not complicated to prove. This is really a, um, classical properties of algebra groups to prove that the, the, the kernel, in fact, is just the, the group mu I introduced here. Okay, this is mu. And the co-kernel is uh, Ah, I have two different T's. So this T here, let's call it uh, G tor. The co-kernel is G tor. It's easy to see that they are the same on this line and on this line. Yeah, yeah, I can also. The center is always contained in a maximal torus. So you can write this complex here. And this line also is a quasi-isomorphism. So you can choose either this one or this one as an abelian uh, candidate to replace this strange thing here, okay? And in fact, so the idea now is to consider the cohomology of this one, which is the one we are interested in, cohomology of G, to push it to the cohomology of this strange thing here, 
and to say that since it's the quasi-isomorphism, the cohomology of this strange thing here is in fact an abelian cohomology or hyper cohomology of something nice, an abelian group. Okay. So the only the only thing the only thing sorry that you have to take care of is uh, how to define the cohomology of this line. Okay. So question. Define the cohomology HI of such a thing, say a complex of non abelian groups. Uh, so, for practical reasons, I will put uh, this one in degree zero and this one in degree minus one. Okay? And the idea is okay, we will define the cohomology of this, uh, such a complex, well, in a well, in a natural way, and I, well, so we, we can propose two definitions. So one is cyclic as usual, and one is geometric using torsors. Uh, I don't have much time to write down uh, huge cycles because the cycles for this kind of object are much worse than the cycles for one single group. So I will choose a geometric description. Uh, so I will just define the zero part. So what is H zero? So H, so for instance, H minus one, so there is a minus one part, is easy to define. And more generally, it works for any morphism of algebraic groups, and even of any sheaf over any base, if you want. So since you, you want to have an exact sequence, essentially, uh, relating the cohomology of this complex and the one of H and the one of G. The only natural definition to, you, you can impose is just you take the kernel of F and you take it the K point of the kernel. Then this one will, will map to H0 of H to H0 of G. And then you can hope that then we will have to define the next step. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry? What was that? So here. This is, I want to define this in this setting, and in fact, this def the definition can be made for any morphism of algebraic groups. So H and G are algebraic groups, or even etal sheaves, or whatever you want. And F is a morphism of groups. Oh, sorry, I thought that was Okay? So, so let's give the, the definition of this one. So the definition of this one is uh, uses use torsors. So so I will consider the set of uh, h to uh, torsors under H. So you consider uh, torsors. So I, I, I put an H here, which it means this is a, a torsor under H. Okay in the sense of this morning lecture, together with uh, a, a trivialization of this to the, the push forward of this torsor to G, okay? So it, it can be stated like this. So this is the data of a, a torsor, an H torsor, and a, an H equivariant map from P to G. Alpha is H equivalent. Okay, you consider all these objects. So this is a pair, in fact, a torsor and a map. And you have a natural uh, equivalence re relation on this set. You just say that uh, two, two, two such data are isomorphic if there, is a, if there is a map from P to P prime, such that the diagram uh, involving P alpha, P prime, alpha prime commutes. I'll let you write down the definition, but there is a natural equivalence relation on this set. And we take this as a definition of the H0 of such a, such a complex. And in fact, if you consider uh, the special case, uh, let's write this here.
So two remarks, sorry remarks. First, uh, so this is no more than a pointed set. You have the trivial torsor here and the trivial trivialization, uh, which is a, the natural point in this set. So this is just a pointed set. Second remark uh, is that uh, there is a cosecyclic uh, description of this set. If you remember this morning, we had a way to uh, construct cosecyclic starting from torsos. So here you have a torsor plus an extra data. So you just follow the proof of this morning and you get a another version of co-cycles uh, that describe this set. Um, and third remark, if uh, H and G, so I, 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 this is clear from the definition also that this, this set is uh, functorial in K and uh, in the complex, because you can, uh, I didn't explain this morning, but you can, push forward uh, torsors and the morphism of algebraic groups. We'll come back to this uh, tomorrow. And if H and G are uh, abelian, or commutative algebraic groups, well then, uh, this set, and in fact the other one and all the other ones you can define, um, identifies uh, coincide with uh, the hypercomology, the Galois classical Galois, well, classical. I don't know if it's classical, but uh, Galois hypercomology group, cohomology groups of this complex of abelian groups, and what does it mean? Uh, so maybe I won't, I won't use the, the blackboard here and I will come back here. Um, so what does it mean, the Galois hypercomology? Well, this is a construction which is very similar to Galois cohomology, to the Galois cohomology you defined in the lectures by David Harari. And uh, in fact, you can extend the definition, uh, well, uh, so hypercomology, a few words on it. So given, say, uh, if C is a bounded complex of a uh, say Galois modules, then one can find uh, there is a natural notion of injective resolution of a complex, not only of a, of a single uh, Galois module, but of a complex, you can find a, uh, an injective resolution Resolution So I don't want to, to define it precisely, but this, this is a complex uh, of injective objects of injective Galois modules, and uh, you want this map to be a, a, a quasi isomorphism of complexes, well essentially in the same sense as I I try to define it. Uh, Above, but you can have uh, this one. This one is a unbounded complex in general. So you can find an injective resolution exactly as in the as in the case when C is reduced to one Galois module, and then uh, you define the hypercomology of the complex just to be the cohomology of the of the complex uh, where you apply uh, you take the Galois 
fixed points here, and uh, you take the cohomology of this. Uh, this is the same definition. Formally, this is exactly the same definition as a Galois cohomology in terms of uh, uh, injective resolution. You just have to be careful about the definition of the injective resolution. But well, no. All right, what you can construct such a such a resolution i using a double complex and then taking the total. It's 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 a map of complexes. It's not a double complex. It's just yeah, it's just a complex. What does it mean injective resolution? <laughs> that's why that's what I want, didn't want to to define, but. Uh, so this is just a morphism of complexes. You can construct it like this, yes. Like the carton eilenberg resolution. So you have a double complex, and then you, you consider the total one. Yeah. So I don't want to give much more details here, but the idea is you essentially you copy the definition of a Galois cohomology using injective resolution for one Galois module, but you you apply this to a, a bounded <laughs> complex of modules. Okay. So it works. And so you can define such a, such a group for any i when h and g are commutative. And this is a group and not only a pointed set. And in fact, it gives the same, you have a, the, the h0 as a geometric description uh, via torsos, okay? So now, okay, we, we define the, so H0, so there is a, also a definition of H1. I don't want to give details, but so can also, one can also define, one can define. So in the non-commutative case, H1 of K, uh, so at least in this case, one can define such a pointed set. Um, the definition is much more, much more technical. So this is more technical. Um, the co-cycles are, are quite complicated to write. And the geometric description has to involve, uh, uh, well, generalization of torsos for H2, so called jobs. But, we, so I don't want to define it now, but there is an H1. And uh, the idea now to define the map uh, ab0 and ab1. Now define ab, ab, abelianization map. So you start from this. You see this one as, you can look at the top blackboard. You see this one as a cohomology of the complex 1 to g, okay? So the top complex. Then you map it to the cohomology of so this is just functoriality, okay? And then you say that there is a map from this one here. And since it is a quasi isomorphism, you have to check it, but when you have a quasi isomorphism of complexes of algebraic groups, then the cohomology set are isomorphic. And bijection, the natural map is a bijection. So this is a bijection. So you have to check it, of course. This is not so, so obvious. But uh, you can do it, either using co-cycles or the geometric description. And you call this one hi ab of kg. So this is just the Galois cohomology of a complex of tori. You call it, say, cg. And uh, and we define the maps, uh, the required map from, from this bad, well, this bad set to a nice abelian Galois cohomology set, okay? And now, uh, well, now, two things. So, you prove uh, a poitou tate exact sequence via Artin Verdier and so on for this, these groups since they behave exactly like, a, well, essentially as if there were only one uh, torus. You have just two torus to take into account, but it works. So you get a poitou tate exact sequence for uh, the cohomology of the, the hypercomology of CG. 
And uh, the second step is, uh, is to, uh, to do the dévissage. Uh, so you want to prove everything for, for this. You want to put to take exact sequence or um, the local global principles for this set. You have them for this, via poit to tate You have them for the kernel. And it's easy to prove that the, well, the kernel of this map is uh, the cohomology of the simply connected cover. So we know everything here by the classical theorem I, I mentioned uh, before. We know everything here by poit to tate So now you have, you have to use this dévissage uh, to get uh, the result for, uh, to get, say, poitou tate non-abelian poitou tate for uh, hi k g, the non-abelian uh, pointed set we are interested in, okay? So you do this, and now you have poitou tate for this, you, you can deduce, you can interpret poitou tate as a, uh, You can interpret Poitou Tate as a Brahmanian as information about Brahmanian obstruction to the local global principles. And it works, and you get the, the following result the theorem. Uh, so we can put uh, several names here. Um, so for the C'est sans sucre for the Hassel principle. Um, what did I put exactly? Uh, uh, Borovoy and, uh, and myself. I will prove that. Uh, well, everything you can expect uh, is true. So, uh, so if G is uh, affine and connected, uh, so uh, the Brownian obstruction to uh, the Hassel principle, weak approximation and strong approximation. To get strong approximation, as in the case of simply connected group, you have to you have to, to, to you have to put an extra assumption about the non-compactness of some of what happens at the bad places. If a modulo uh, non-compactness assumption assumption. Uh, 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 are the only ones. And in fact, uh, the, same the same kind of arguments uh, using uh, abelianization of cohomology and uh, where to take the exact sequences uh, give also the result for homogeneous spaces. Not only uh, are the only ones for torsors under G. And in fact, one can replace uh, torsors by uh, nice homogeneous spaces. Can replace torsors by uh, homogeneous spaces of G with uh, connected stabilizers. For this last, for this version here, no, for this homogeneous space version, you really have to deal with the with the H two of uh, non-abelian group. So this is more technical to to write, but the idea is uh, is, is the same. And I will give just one last remark. Uh,
And assuming the finiteness of chi, you can also get rid of the affine assumption, okay? As in the, in the semi-abelian case, okay? Uh, one last remark. Uh, there is a way to, uh, can prove, uh, uh, well, some parts of this result, part of this theorem, using, uh, so th this cohomological proof can be, in some sense, rephrased in a more geometrical way, uh, can prove parts of this theorem uh, using uh, more geometric methods. So here the dévisage was done by cohomological means, and you can do this dévisage by uh, uh, geometrical ways using uh, vibrations, i.e. Uh, nice vibrations, and uh, so, um, so when you have a nice vibration, when you know we want to prove something about the total space, you assume that, say, the Brahman obstruction to the to weak approximation has a principle is the only one for the base and for the fibers of the vibration, and you hope to deduce it for the total space. And uh, here the vibrations are are quite nice. Using more precise uh, information on the structures of algebra groups, you can get very special vibrations. Uh, where the, the generic statement I gave about the, if you have results about the basis and the fibers, then you get results uh, about the total space. Uh, but you cannot get as result as precise as this one. But some parts are, are accessible by geometric methods. Okay, I will stop here, thank you.